Hello everyone, Adam here and welcome to the first Gameplay Review UK Community Challenge of 2020. This year, the Grok community will be taking you on another journey through time by using Kerbal Space Program to create replicas of historical aircraft and spacecraft. Each monthly episode will focus on pivotal inventions from each decade starting with the Wright Brothers Wright Flyer and from there we will be going all of the way through the 20th century and up to the present date. One, release, release, release. Fire. Fire. This first episode focuses on the 20th century's noughties, and since the Wright brothers built and flew the first successful self-propelled heavier-than-air aircraft in 1903, it is a no-brainer to start here. They first made a prototype glider around the turn of the century, which once refined was essentially the same as their air-propelled version which first flew on December the 17th, 1903. The only real addition was the engine and propellers. With this first flight, the Wright brothers set the standard for all future aircraft. They had developed firm concepts in aerodynamics and lift. They'd added control surfaces for things like pitch and roll used a tail which automatically adjusted to compensate for torque created by gyroscopic precession. They built their own engine out of aluminium to ensure the best thrust to weight ratio they could and revolutionised the air propeller's shape as before people thought they ought to be more like the ones used on boats. The Wright brothers managed to do all of this in one design and with only about seven years of high school education between them. With all this said, I would expect a bunch of moderately well-educated 21st centuryers to be able to replicate this in Kerbal Space Program, and so I asked the group community to recreate some propelled Wright flyers of their own. I have three versions to show you. There's two from Community Lieutenants, Space Lab and Comicula 76, and one from Captain H.B. Stratos. First up, we have a Wright Flyer made by Comicula76. I really like this craft because it's a nice clean craft which works as intended using the same kinds of parts the Wright Brothers used. In real life the Flyer was launched on a rail but all of our KSP creators have opted for a free takeoff which is good. A rail would have spawned on one of the runways but this was before runways were created you see hence I've run them off into the flat deserts before takeoff. Next up is Space Lab's Kitty Hawker. Now, Space Lab spent more time on detailing than Commie Killer, and the result is a very nice looking Wright Flyer. However, Space Lab didn't spend the same amount of time worrying about realistic propeller functionality and instead the Kerbal inside him told him to slap some jet engines on it to get it to work and for all wants and purposes, it does. I'm not sure if Space Lab was aware that his propeller blade pitch was all off. All I did was adjust this and make the canard an active surface and you will see that actually it works like the Wright Brothers intended all along. I also made the tail a bit larger and added some wheels, but this just makes life a bit easier. Lastly, we have a Wright Flyer made by HB Stratos, and I have to say, this craft really takes the cake. Now firstly, HP Stratos has only used stock parts, that's stock without any DLC. And as you can see, it has all of the features we could have hoped for, and I mean all of them. For example, HP has even made the flexi wings the Wright Flyer had. And just look at the stock tail, it's beautiful. This is a feat I didn't even expect from someone making it using the DLCs, so I take my hat off to you for this one. However, 
due to stock restraints, HB has snuck some sneaky little rocket engines on for propulsion. Now, to be fair, there's basically zero fuel, and what happens is, as the propellers start to move, they start to generate negative thrust, which produces fuel, which the rockets can then use, which is a fair way to look at it. But I'm, look, don't tell HB. I know HB loves the stock stuff, and so do I. But just so I want to see the ultimate right flyer. I'm going to use the DLC, I'm going to add the propellers, and we're going to see what it looks like. The Wright brothers had set the standards for heavier than air flight, and soon there were many different flying machines filling the skies. By the end of the decade, planes had become reliable enough to cross relatively long distances, and on the 25th of July 1909, Louis Bellario became the first to cross the English Channel by plane. In the not too distant future, these aircraft would be flying between continents in record-breaking time. But first, this new invention would be called upon to help in the attritional struggle that was to come in the next decade, during the First World War. The next episode will focus on the Great War, how aircraft were utilised, and what improvements were implemented in order for the pilots to gain the upper hand in combat. Thank you for watching the first leg of my community challenge of 2020. I hope you like the video and the direction we are taking with this series. I'd like to take this opportunity to give an extra shout out to Comikiller76, Space Lab and HB Stratos. They all did an amazing job, all three of them. I'm very proud of you guys. Thanks for uploading your craft files. Do check out the links to their work below. Also, a reminder to the rest of you that this process is still ongoing, so now's the time to join our Discord and start to participate with this year's challenge. There's lots of planes to make and lots of spacecraft. Thanks again for watching, and see you later. I truly hope you have enjoyed my videos. They do take more and more time for me to produce, so please do consider supporting me on Patreon so I can focus on providing the best content I can. Please share and like this video, and if you do subscribe, do remember to hit the bell icon 